We begin today's video with our first story, The Screams from the Woods. This happened in the late 1990s. I was horseback riding in my home country of Ireland. See, I wanted to go and check out some local caves that were in a set of woods. It was a spot that not many people went to. I guess it had to do with the fact it was off limits, mainly due to how unstable the cave was. Now, the idea of going into the cave that could, and pardon the pun, gave me in, was something I wasn't wanting to mess with. I was more interested in sitting next to the cave. See, there is a small lake where I like to go to and spend time to work on artwork and just all in all, relax. So, in order to get there, I could have chosen to walk, but as I mentioned earlier, I took my horse Epona with me. Yes, don't laugh, I did name my horse after the one from Legend of Zelda. Anyways, as Epona and I are going down this long stretch of dirt trail, I started to notice something. Actually, the only reason I noticed it was because I heard somebody clearing their throat. I turned around and I noticed a man walking about 50 feet behind Epona and I. I really didn't mind him too much, as sometimes people will come for walks with their dogs, or just walk in general. Give it about 30 seconds, and he steps off of the trail and walks off into the trees. I figured he might have been camping with family or something, and I did my best to forget about him. Although, looking back, he did seem suspicious. Anyways... Fast forward about 20 minutes later, and Epona and I arrived to the cave. I went ahead and got off of Epona, and I'm able to get her laid down next to me. A rare sight, but it's really cute if you've never seen a horse lay down, or sit, should I say. Give it another hour, and there I am drawing in my sketchbook. Out of the blue, I hear somebody scream at the top of their lungs. It was really creepy. It sounded like somebody was in pain and crying for help. Very eerie, but since it was so far away, I figured perhaps I might have been hearing the sound of a wild animal. Besides, the noise slowly starts to fade away, and I assumed it was just an animal walking further into the woods. I ignore it, and I return back to drawing. Fast forward another 30 minutes, and the sun is starting to go down. I figured now is a good time for Epona and I to start making our way back to the house. As I'm starting to put my sketchbook and pencils into my backpack, that's when I began to hear tree branches breaking and leaves being stepped on. This was when I now look next to the cave, and I'm able to see a large tall shadow figure that's moving around. As I paid more attention to the details, it started to become more clear. I see a face, and I recognize it. It's the same man I'd seen a little under two hours ago. Same scar on his left cheek, scrawny and pale with long hair. Seriously, he looked like a monster. But this wasn't what was so scary. What really got to me was he was holding a hatchet. And to make things worse, he had a bunch of red dried up stains on his white t-shirt. Definitely a weird sight. But he now starts walking up to me. And this was when I was starting to connect everything. What was with all the dried up red stains on his shirt? Why were those same red stains on the hatchet? Also, what was with the scream from earlier? I try to act cool, and I say, Hi, um, nice evening we're having, right? He just stares at me as if I was speaking in another language. It got awkward, and I go ahead and excuse myself. I get up on a pona, and we start making our way out of there. However, what happens next was one of the scariest moments of my life. I hear him scream like a madman. Then, I feel a gust of air pass inches away from my face. I look to my left, and sure enough, the hatchet he was holding earlier was now embedded in the tree. Seriously, he threw this thing like a tomahawk and was probably looking at taking me out in one shot. Well, it was enough to scare Epona and I, and we basically book it out of there, never looking back. Once we got home, I called the police and I told them about the suspicious activity. Later that night, I hear a bunch of helicopters in the woods by our house, and I even have some officers come up to me with more questions. 
Well, as it turned out, they ended up finding someone who had passed. I'll tell you, just hearing that I got the chills as I remembered the screams from earlier in the evening. You can imagine just how I felt after the fact I could have been the one that was next. By the way, I worked with sketch artists, and I gave them all the details I could. A few weeks later, there was a story in the news. An officer was taking a break at a rest stop, just catching up on some work. That's when he noticed a man that was acting really suspicious. So he goes up to talk to him like normal, but... He realized he looked like someone they had been looking for. Bingo, there was a match, and he was taken in, where he's now serving for the rest of his life. Our second story, sneaking around our campsite. It was the summer of 2007. My dad and I had gone on a camping trip about an hour outside of Anchorage, Alaska. For reference, I was 15. This was supposed to be a father-daughter bonding mini-vacation. My dad was a state trooper, and I rarely saw him. So, I jumped at the opportunity when my dad made the plans. After all, mother had recently passed, leaving just the both of us to look after one another. Anyways, we packed up some tents and other belongings in my dad's pickup, and we drove to a spot out in the mountains. This was a place we'd gone camping before when my mother was still around. We liked it because there was a river we would always camp next to that we liked to go swimming in. So, we arrive around 5pm and we set up our camp. We start the campfire and we began to make our typical camping meal of hot dogs with s'mores for dessert. After dinner, we pretty much spent the rest of the evening watching movies on my dad's laptop. It was fun, but... I remember crying missing mom, but at the same time, I was so happy I could be with my dad. Fast forward to one in the morning, and both of us were fast asleep. Now, my dad is a heavy sleeper, meaning there could be a concert going on outside, and seriously, he won't get up. I don't know if it's because he hears it and chooses to ignore it, or he's really just that good, but it might explain why he didn't react to what I was hearing. See, I kept hearing what sounded like footsteps, trying to remain as quiet as possible. The only reason I heard them was because I heard a tree branch breaking, followed by somebody going, shh. Of course, we are out in the middle of nowhere, and we hadn't seen anyone when we first arrived. Could it have been that I was hearing a bear? I highly doubt it, seeing as the footsteps would have sounded heavier. Either way, I make the dumb decision of exiting the tent and I'm trying to find the source of the noise. Once I was outside, I look around in the twilight, but all I'm able to see are the trees surrounding our campsite. Nothing too special, it seems. Well, it seems as if I was hearing things. Since I was awake, I figured, why not just go use the restroom? So I grab my dad's M9 and some paper, and I head to a nearby tree to do my business. This was when it happened. I started to hear giggling in some bushes about 30 feet to my right. Sure enough, there are now the sounds of two deep-voiced men, and out of nowhere, two large men step out. They look like your typical mountain men, with large beards and long hair wearing overalls. I was genuinely creeped out, but luckily, I had my dad's M9. Of course, I should mention I had never used it before, so I didn't realize the safety was on. Dumb mistake on my part, I know. But seeing as I couldn't fire anything, these two took advantage and started to get closer, now revealing knives. Honestly, seeing the face of relief when they saw I didn't know how to use it was an absolute nightmare. I'm now running back to the tent, basically trying to make as much noise as possible. But luckily, I catch a break as my dad stumbles out of the tent with the AR he had brought. Seeing my dad armed, was enough for these two to stop directly in their tracks, and I remember him saying, Get away from my daughter. If I see you two get any closer, you best believe I won't be afraid to use this thing. No one will miss you. Yeah, my dad's pretty awesome. Well, these two apologize, with one of them now saying, Come on, we were just messing around. Honestly, she reminds us of our niece. 
We just wanted to check up on her. We just wanted to make sure she was safe. Well, my dad fires a warning shot, and these two take off faster than a roadrunner. So, unable to get proper sleep, my dad and I take our valuables with us, and we pretty much made our way back to the car, which was a 15-minute walk from us. When we arrived, we noticed what sounded like air leaking from the tires. Sure enough, it looked as if someone, or someones, had slashed the tires. We can't say with 100% confirmation it was the two we encountered, but come on, who else could it have been? Thankfully, the tires made it until we made it into town, where we ended up calling AAA. So, that's the creepy camping story that my dad and I share every time we get together with family. Story number three, Mysterious Creature or Burglar. Okay, I want to start my submission by saying this. In no way, shape, or form do I gain anything from making this story up. I wouldn't even be sharing this story if I wasn't confident with what I experienced. More than anything, I want to share this so that maybe someone else could give me some answers. Now, I'm extremely familiar with things like skinwalkers. I know about them due to my Native American heritage. Of course, I never believed any of it. I always thought they were just a legend, something like a myth to tell while you're sitting around the campfire. Anyways, it was in the late 1990s. I was living in central Arizona, where my home was located on a large two-acre property that extended into a nearby set of woods. If you follow these woods long enough, it will lead you to a mountain range. But I tended to avoid those upper areas, as they were a lot more isolated. Now, I've heard tales about strange sightings in those woods, but most of the time, they were explained as a normal wild animal, or a person hunting. I would even have animals like raccoons and coyotes dig through my trash. But I want to take you back to one night where I couldn't exactly explain who or what it was I saw. Well, it was just myself and my three-year-old German Shepherd Shadow, and I remember us sitting on the living room couch watching The Simpsons. It's around 8 p.m., and all is quiet. Seemingly out of nowhere, Shadow gets up from his usual spot, and he begins growling and whining. I found this odd, as I'd just taken him outside to use the restroom ten minutes ago. I mean, if he really needed to go outside, it would have to wait. Fifteen to twenty seconds later, I hear a trash can fall over. Assuming it was just a raccoon, I ignore it, but I soon grow to realize Shadow isn't lighting up. I'm starting to get a bit suspicious, so I grab my double barrel from the closet and I load it up with two shells. I now head over to the kitchen, where I would use the back door to get to the trash cans. So I open the door, and Shadow manages to squeeze past me, where he takes off chasing after something weird. Here's what I mean. I have a back porch light that automatically turns on any time there's movement. Well, it was on, but since I hadn't changed the light bulb in months, the lighting was terrible. This meant I couldn't really see who or what Shadow was chasing. The best details I remember were that it looked like a person, just very tall and skinny. Their movement was abnormal, and it almost looked as if somebody was in a costume with antlers. But that wasn't the only thing that was weird. On top of that strange sighting, there was the smell of iron and garbage. At least, a mix of both. Obviously, a bit spooked out. I call for Shadow, who returns 30 or so seconds later. However, I noticed he was limping a bit. It's almost as if something had attacked him. On top of that, it looked as if he had some scratch marks on his back. Well, I'm pretty much on the verge of losing it, but I go ahead and call the police, who proceed to laugh it off as a prank. Great. So, since they weren't coming, I had to fend for myself. But even so, I give it another five minutes and I call them again. This time, a different operator answers, and I tell them I saw somebody trying to sneak inside my property. This time, they take me a lot more seriously. I guess big scary creature isn't serious, but a burglar is. I digress. As the minutes go by, and I wait for officer's arrival, I ended up hearing the loudest screech I'd ever heard. It sounded like a coyote mixed with a person. On top of that, 
It's as if the voice was coming through a filter. Anyways, officers arrive and they inspect my property, and one key detail they do notice were the abnormal footprints that were in the mud. On top of this, there was a bunch of scratch and claw marks on the outside walls. In summary, I don't exactly know what it was I experienced. If it was a prank, it sure was a scary one. But why would anyone go as far to hurt Shadow for a silly joke? That's beyond me. This is why I'm leaning more to something unexplained. By the way, I took him to see a veterinarian, and he had told me that he'd never seen any marks like this. Regardless, he got better, which was more important. Also, I sold the place, and I moved back with my parents a few months later, and I haven't been back there since. So, strange creature or elaborate prank from some jerk? I don't know, but I'm just glad I'm still here to share my story. Story number four. The Abandoned Cabin in the Woods. Who am I kidding? When you're on summer vacation, you like to do so many fun things. Stay at home and play video games, go to the mall, go to the beach, all that fun stuff. Well, I'll tell you one thing my brother and I love to do. That's going to the woods. Of course, we wouldn't enter places that said no trespassing. But there was one time we made an exception to that rule. An exception that almost cost us. Well, at least I think it might have. This took place in the summer of 2006 in Sweden. My brother and I, who were both 19 at the time, were spending time at a local pizza parlor, having food and watching some of the sports they had on the big televisions. For whatever reason, the conversation of urban exploration came up, and he mentioned that he would love to head toward a nearby forest to catch the sunset. I really liked the idea, and I figured, why not? So, once our tummies were filled with pizza goodness, we pay for our food, and we drive over to the other side of our small town. Once we arrived, we go to a small dirt parking lot, where we get out of the car, and we began our trek down a familiar trail. Sure enough, we arrive to an opening that overlooks the entire town. It was beautiful. Fast forward an hour, and it was now starting to get dark. We now make our way down the same trail, only this time, we noticed something that wasn't here before. In a fork in the road that we had originally taken, there was a sign that said, No Trespassing. I guess in our rush to catch the sunset, we had never noticed it. Of course, any normal person would have ignored it and continued home. But then again, why would I submit a story where my brother and I leave and nothing happens? That wouldn't exactly fit with the scary story's theme, now would it? So, we take this fork in the road that has us stepping off the trail and going to ground that was more difficult to proceed on. Part of the reason had to do with the fact that there were a bunch of sharp rocks and rose bushes with spines, and we did get a few cuts and bruises here and there, but our curiosity was peaking as we began to see yellow caution tape. But why was this out here? My brother and I continue, and that's when we notice a man-made trail is now becoming visible. Sweet, finally, some steady ground. We continue walking down this unmarked path, when all of a sudden, we come across what looks like an abandoned cabin. It was still standing, but you could tell that nobody lived here. At least, we thought so. Well, outside, there appeared to be a bunch of women's clothing, alongside trash and debris. It was really creepy, and on top of that, we saw some missing persons posters. Was it possible we stumbled upon something we weren't supposed to see? Well, not exactly sure, but we found out we weren't alone moments later. So, my brother and I head up to the front door, and we slowly open it. Sure, it was unlocked, and as we tiptoe our way inside, going down the cold and quiet corridors, we started to hear whispers. We approach these whispers as we turn the corner of what looks to be a kitchen, and what we see is something we won't ever forget. On the walls are a bunch of ritual-like symbols written in red. Then, there is a single lamp in the middle of the room, with five hooded figures just sitting still. 
We must have stood there staring at each other for ten seconds, but it honestly felt like an eternity. After this, one of them stands up and in a calm, deep voice says, You need to leave now, and you need to forget everything that you saw here today. If not, we know how to find you. Let's just say my brother and I did a 180, and we book it out of there, not even caring about the extra scratches and bruises that we got going down the same path. The reason I submitted my story was because I was reading some things about some strange cults. I don't know who they were, but... They do sound quite familiar to some that I was researching. Now, whether or not they're still active all these years later, I don't know. But I just hope those articles of clothing didn't belong to somebody that had gone missing. If anyone is an expertise in this sort of thing, maybe you can leave a comment. I'll go ahead and be checking the comments section, and I'll provide any more details and information that I can remember and give. Also, it's worth mentioning we never told the police as we were more scared about getting in trouble for trespassing, although looking back, that was pretty dumb of us to think. Story number five, Robbed in the Woods. Around 10 years ago, I was living in Southern California near a state park called Black Star Canyon. It is located in the Santa Ana Mountains in Orange County. This was pretty much a playground for me. You see, before moving out to Minnesota, where I'm now married with my wife and have two kids, I used this as a place to train. I love competing in marathons, and I would use the trails to do my runs. I even took breaks from running, and I would go on my bicycle. It was pretty much a daily routine of mine, and every morning before work, I would go for a run. However, one night was different. I had family staying, and I was pretty much occupied with showing them around town. But once they had left that weekend, I was finally back to my routine. But since I didn't want to wait until the next morning to get my workout, I hopped on my bicycle, and I began the trek through the canyon and wooded areas. Big mistake. For one, it was already dark. And two, that's when the animals like to come out. But I figured I had my lamp light on my head, and... I even had a light on my bicycle, so what was the worst I could encounter? With the full moon above me lighting the path, I make my way around a bend that has me go through a small set of woods. I was maybe a few hundred feet in when I ended up hitting a rock, causing me to fall forward. I'll tell you, it hurt really bad, but luckily I had a helmet on. Even so, I, I noticed a huge scratch on my cheek, and to make things worse... It was starting to swell. Well, great. Looks like I had to make my way back home sooner than I expected. As I recollect myself, I ended up hearing footsteps that were coming from the nearby trees. Confused, I sat there in silence as a man soon appears wearing all dark clothing and wearing a baseball cap. I found it weird, but perhaps he was going for a late night run. However, one look at his clothing from my flashlight revealed he was wearing heavy-duty clothing, the kind you would expect to see in a burglar, or a robber, if that makes any sense. Well, what do you know, he's armed, and he's demanding I give him everything that I had, and at the time, all I had was my cell phone. Well, I ended up listening to what he tells me, and I hand it over without any further questions. He eventually lets me go, and I take off, but that's not before one final message. Once I thought I was far enough, I end up hearing what sounds like rounds being fired in my direction. I even hear the distinct sound of rounds hitting the trees next to me. Well, I pretty much rode out of there faster than Sonic the Hedgehog, and immediately I head home where I call the police. Along with park rangers, they ended up finding someone who matched my description. Turns out, he had a little too much to drink that night, and it was the reasoning behind his behavior. He was still taken in for questioning, and eventually, he was put behind bars after being connected to other crimes. Also, I got my phone back, which was pretty nice. Story number six. At first, there was one. This was back in the early 2000s. A friend and I went camping in the Alaskan wilderness, where we had gone camping growing up. 
See, my friend and I were really close, and we were pretty much like sisters. On this occasion, it was just the both of us, and we were really excited. We had just recently graduated high school, and both of us had turned 18, so we were looking forward to this summer getaway. However, in all our excitement, we had no way of realizing what we were about to get ourselves into. Anyways, on to the weekend in question. We arrived at a campground that already had a few families situated. Since we wanted to be on our own, we ended up walking about a mile away from everyone until we can see we were all by ourselves. So, the first night goes fairly well. Second evening, my friend Katie and I are relaxing by the fire, having a couple of drinks and hot dogs, when this random dude seemingly appears out of nowhere. He didn't look like your typical creep. He looked to be in his mid-twenties, sort of like a college student. He had short hair neatly combed to the side, with a bit of stubble on his face. He introduces himself as Gary, and he tells us that he is a police officer in training. He seemed friendly enough, so we invited him to sit with us while he recounted some stories. Again, nothing seemed too suspicious about him yet. Eventually, it's around 11 p.m., and my friend and I are starting to get tired. He sees both of us yawning, and he excuses himself for the evening. And that should have been the end of the story. I seriously wish it would have been. But it was about to get a whole lot worse. Around 3 in the morning, I suddenly wake up from dreaming of food, and I start hearing talking. I unzip the tent, and I look outside, and there sitting next to the campfire is the same guy from earlier, except this time he's not alone. Yes, wouldn't you know it, there is another guy. He looked much older, and by the looks of it, he was armed with a hatchet. Luckily, my dad let me borrow his M9, so I wasn't too worried. Even so, I wasn't sure what these two had in mind. Well, I exit the tent with my said M9 in my back pocket, and I started to make my way over to some nearby trees. Of course, the first guy notices me and calls me over, and then he says, Hey, where are you going? Why don't you come sit next to the campfire with us? Still, I couldn't be too certain if these guys were up to no good, so I make my way over. They then go on about how beautiful my friend and I are, and they want to know if we are interested in, and I quote, doing it with them. I sure wasn't doing anything with either of them, and I tell them they have to leave. But this doesn't sit too well with them, as the older man gets up and demands he has it his way. He's now walking closer to me, swinging the hatchet like a madman. Well, it doesn't take a genius to realize what I do next. I grab the M9 from my back, and I tell him to stop in his place. I didn't need to tell him otherwise. Both of them have their eyes wide open, and they go on to say, Come on, put that thing away. We were just joking with you. Can't you take a joke? At this point, my friend had woken up from the commotion, and she stepped out of the tent. Well, both of these dudes realize they're better off leaving, and thus, they head into the woods without saying another thing. So, instead of staying, we grab our things, and we make the 30-minute walk back to the parking lot and leave. We never see or hear from them ever again. Story number seven. He wasn't finished with us. So, I'm a 27-year-old male, and I was setting up a camping trip with my friends. It was supposed to be the boys. My friends were returning from service in the army, and we were going to spend it together, camping in the Texas wilderness. Unfortunately for me, they ended up changing plans last minute. We still went a couple of months later, but... I was bummed out that I invested all my time in looking forward to this. Still, I didn't want all the preparation to go to waste. So, as a way to bond with my younger sister, I told her if she wanted to come along. She was beyond excited. She had recently gone through a pretty bad breakup, and I knew this would be a great way to get her mind off of it. So, let me quickly explain the setup to this story. We were going on a Friday afternoon and we would be leaving the next day in the evening. Since my sister had summer school that day, I ended up going to the woods where we would be camping, 
and I had a friend of mine help me set things up. I wanted to know if he wanted to stay, but he told me he was busy looking after his newborn son. Still, it was nice of him to offer to help me. Fast forward to later that afternoon, and I'm going to pick up my sister, who was luckily just a 20-minute drive away. We go back to the campsite an hour later, and we proceed to head to a nearby lake to do some swimming. Once we had our fill of fun and games, we return back to our family's RV to shower. Then, we step outside to get some dinner going. After dinner, we sat around the campfire, listening to music on the radio and telling stories. I forget exactly how long we were sitting out there, but at one point, we notice a couple of headlights shine through the shrubbery. Soon enough, we can see a jeep that is slowly driving next to us from a nearby dirt road. We didn't mind the jeep too much, as they eventually left. Give it another 20 minutes, and we see it return, before eventually, the lights go off. We then hear a car door open and close, and then, a man walks up to our campsite. He was claiming to be a park ranger, and he tells us we needed to leave. Well, that was weird. We knew for a fact we were allowed to camp here. After all, why were there other campers? I call him out on his lies, and then he explains, This is the spot I always save for myself and my family, and you two just so happen to be in it. Now, I'll be nice and I'll let you two pack up your things, but I need you two to leave. Talk about being protective of your spot. I mean, was the park ranger thing really true? Or was he using that as an excuse so we would listen to what he said? Things were not adding up, but I could tell he was pretty angry. Still, me being the army guy that I am, I tell him he is the one that needs to leave us alone. After all, my buddy and I were setting up the camp since the morning. Why is it that it's now one in the morning he wants us to clear the area? Well, he pretty much tells me off and... He gets back in his jeep and leaves. Well, good. We both thought that was the end of it. However, give it another hour. Now my sister is asleep in her tent, and me being the night owl I was, I was sitting by the campfire reading a book. Once again, I'm able to hear car tires come to a stop, and I quickly raise my head, scanning the immediate area for any signs of movement. Guess who's back? Yep, it's the same angry dude. Only this time, he had a baseball bat. Here's the thing. I have a concealed carry, and if this guy thought he was going to attack, he had another thing coming. As expected, he starts telling me off once again, and then he heads over to my tent and proceeds to take swings at it. I tell him he needs to stop now, otherwise things were about to get bad for him. So he comes charging at me, and I get in my position to protect myself. You should have seen the dude. He stops in his tracks like he put his brakes on, and he drops his baseball bat. Without saying another word, he runs for his life, heading back to his jeep. Honestly, I was more worried about protecting my sister, and I would have done anything to protect her. Well, fast forward a bit later, and I'd called park rangers. They praised me for what I did, and they tell me they've had issues with that same guy in the past, he always gets mad when people take his spot, but he's never really been that bad about it. I guess I just so happened to catch him on a night that he had a meltdown. Good thing I never saw him again, or things might have turned out differently for him. Story number 8. Creepy Encounter in State Park A few days ago, I was out on a wilderness trek with my best friend Evelyn. We live in Southern California, and we were about 5 miles into our planned 10-mile trip inside Chino Hill State Park. At the halfway point, we decided to stop in a clearing in the woods to have some lunch. We had packed some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, along with some bananas, and we sat there just relaxing. It was nice. There were a few benches the State Park Park Rangers had set up underneath the cover of some trees. So... We sat there talking, taking photos, when we noticed a man begin to walk over to us. Side note, we had seen a few runners here and there, but we were in an area of the state park that was as quiet as you can imagine. The last person we had seen 
was over 30 minutes ago, and they were going in the opposite direction. Anyways, back to this mystery guy. He wasn't wearing any sort of running gear or something you would see for walking in the woods. He had a button-down dress, shirt, and jeans, and it's not exactly something you would expect to see out here. I would describe him as looking in his early 40s, with messy blonde hair and sunglasses. So, he sort of just walks up to my friend and I and takes a seat next to me. Mind you, he didn't say a single word. It was a bit awkward, and both Avalyn and I look at each other with that face of, Really? Out of all the spots you could sit, you sit right next to me? I finally speak up, and I tell him, Hey, was there something you needed help with? He looks me up and down, before finally speaking up. Oh, I was just taking a break from walking. Don't mind me. I wouldn't have minded him too much, if it wasn't for the fact he puts his hands on my shoulder, almost as if he's going for a hug. I was genuinely creeped out, and I get up followed by Evelyn. This seems to anger him, as he now tells us, Come on, how's about a couple of beautiful young ladies like yourself go with me into the cover of those trees? Come on, we can have so much fun. Obviously, this guy was off his rockers. Not that I couldn't already tell with the smell of cheap drink underneath his breath. Deciding this guy wasn't up to any good, my friend and I immediately begin to walk away while he just stares at us from a distance. That should have been the end of it, but it wasn't. About a mile goes by and we haven't seen him. We assume we had lost him and we're a bit more relaxed. However, we ended up stopping to tie his shoes. Sure enough, in the distance, I can see an outline of a person. As they got closer into view, we realize it's the same dude from before, and this time, he's carrying a large stick. Let's just say that by seeing Evelyn and I, he quickens his pace and he begins charging. We bolted, as once again we're being followed. But luckily, we catch a break, as we can see a running group that's approaching us from in front. We wave them down, and we now watch as Mr. Creepy Dude comes to a stop. We explain what's happening, and all the while... The man from earlier disappears into some trees. Well, it's decided. He was up to no good. And so we call some park rangers to report the strange activity. And that was pretty much it. I know it's not as scary as the other stories. But just imagine it from our perspective. Being out in the middle of the wilderness when some random dude shows up wanting to have his way. You aren't exactly going to be best friends now, are you? Anyways, as far as I know, he hasn't been found. Story number 9. My dog saves me from potential robbery. A few days ago, I was pretty bored around the house. Seeing as it's already toward the end of July, I've pretty much done everything I can think of when it comes to summer break activities. Honestly, I needed to get back into shape as I got him pretty lazy ever since school let out for summer in May. For some background, I'm female, 20 years old, and I live in Minnesota. Something else of note is that I'm on the track and running field team for my school. I was pretty good to sticking to my schedule for the first couple of weeks of break, but then I got introduced to Breaking Bad and other TV series, and well, I've been stuck in my room ever since. Okay, that's enough background for now. This afternoon, once the sun was on its way behind some mountains and the heat had calmed down, my German shepherd Mason and I go for a walk on a trail that's behind a shopping district. This was a place I love going to because the trail leads you into a forest. In this forest are various rest areas that runners and walkers will take advantage of to sit down and enjoy the beauty of the outdoors. Anyways, Mason and I walk about two miles in, and so far, everything is fairly normal. We did see a couple of runners and walkers, and they ended up waving hello. I, in return, do the same thing, and nothing too spooky happens just yet. Eventually, I reach a turn back and look at my phone. It's 8pm, and I'm estimating about 30 minutes of sunlight left. Sweet, no problem. Looks like I timed it just right to be able to make it back to the car, before the complete darkness, of course. I go from the bench, and we begin walking back. However, 
I soon come to realize I might have underestimated the large and tall trees, as it was now darker than it should have been. This meant that it was hard to see what was ahead of me. I mean, I still had the light from my cell phone, but it doesn't exactly light all the way in front of you. This was bad for me because when I'm about 10 minutes from exiting, I notice a shadow move behind the tree line. Since I saw people earlier, I assumed this was just some random person walking. However, the first sign something was off was when Mason started to growl. Note, he hadn't done this with anyone else during the day, and he is the friendliest dog that I know. The only times he's acted like this was when I was walking him one night and some creepy guy came up to me wanting my number. I'm not kidding. Well, we soon pass this shadow and Mason starts to relax. Give it another two minutes and that's when I realize it. Someone is following us. Sure enough, I turn around and that same shadow is around a hundred feet behind me and it's hiding behind a tree. The only reason I saw it was because my light was able to just barely reveal them. I found this behavior odd. I mean, surely if they saw I had seen them, they would have come out or gone their own way, right? Why was this person insisting and in staying close behind me? I wasn't sure, but I started to get a bit scared, so I rushed Mason to quicken his pace. We now lose sight of this person, as footsteps are heard echoing in the trees surrounding me. Well, just when we can see the lights from the parking lot, a shadow jumps in front of us. My light now reveals the full details of this stranger. Someone wearing all dark clothing with a hoodie is covering his face, and he's demanding I hand over my phone, wallet, and any other valuables I might have had. Now, I didn't see a weapon on him, but I could see he kept his hands inside his jacket pocket. At this point, I don't think this guy had really seen the kind of dog I had. Now that he realized I had this large German Shepherd and he was ready to attack, I'll tell you, he kind of dropped the tough guy act and immediately he ran off into the trees. I take this as my opportunity to run to the car and I head straight home. Sure, maybe it was a prank, but I found out that a couple of days later, a college student was robbed while running late in the night. The girl described him exactly as I did, wearing all dark clothing with a hoodie covering his face. So far, police are looking into it, but it's one of those things I'll have to update you on as I know more details. For now, that's it. Thanks. Story number 10. Great Michigan Lakes Encounter. This was in 2010. My brother and I ended up going fishing in the Michigan Great Lakes. For anyone who's never been here, just know it's massive and it's absolutely beautiful. The lakes are surrounded by miles and miles of forests and woods, and you could pretty much get lost if you didn't know your way around. Well, as I mentioned, my brother and I drove to get here and we spent the majority of the day by the lake. After fishing, we wanted to go catch the sunset near a cliffside. In order to get there, we had to go through a small forested area that eventually leads to a trail that will take you to the spot I'm talking about. As we rounded a curve in the trail, we ended up seeing him. There, sitting on a rock, was a man in a ski mask with what looked to be like a crowbar. We both found it odd, as it was easily 90 degrees outside. And here is this dude in clothing that you would expect to see from a bank robber. Well, he takes a look at us, and I say to him, Hey man, are you okay? Aren't you a little bit warm in that getup? He stares at my brother and I, and looks as if he was angry with us. The two of you need to pretend you didn't see me, okay? If you know what's good for you, you'll remain quiet. You can imagine our confusion. I begged him to tell us more. But all he said was, so That's all I need to tell you. Now get out of here, before I change my mind. We do exactly just that. However, we did find his activity suspicious. Therefore, we ended up reporting the stranger to a police officer. They told us he was dangerous, and that they were looking for somebody who matched the same description. I guess he had robbed a jewelry store, and he had been on the run. But could it have been we saw the same person? 
Well, you guessed it right. It was a match, and officers had taken him in. Now, even though we were relieved to get him caught, we were pretty scared a few weeks after. I guess we were concerned that he might be looking for us, but we never did hear from him again, so it's safe to say that'll never happen. Story number 11. Mystery in the Cabin. Hey there. I've been a huge fan of yours ever since I started listening to you a month ago. The stories you've read have taught me so much, and I'm more than happy to share my experience that I haven't submitted anywhere else. This story is from last December. Now, for some background. My family owns a cabin up in the Montana mountains. This cabin was a place we go to every single summer, as it was a great getaway from the busy town we live in. However, during the winter, we tend to keep away from it due to how cold it gets. I mean, there have been times we go, but we liked it better in the summer. Something else of note is that it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. There are some cabins in those mountains, but they're so far apart, you wouldn't be able to tell, to be honest. Also, there are miles of wood separating us, so there's that too. But more than anything, there would be no reason to visit the cabin unless you knew it was there. With that information, let's go to December 2018. I had gone to stay at the cabin on my own for some time. We were actually planning on spending the holidays with a family up here, but I decided to go a week early to do some decorating. Plus, this would be an excuse to get away from the annoying dogs we have next door. Finally, I would be able to get some proper sleep. Well, it was the night before my parents and little brother and sister was set to arrive, and I sat by the chimney, drinking some hot chocolate and watching a movie on my laptop. Out of nowhere, I hear what sounds like one of the bedroom windows open. Now, since I had the volume up on the laptop, I hadn't heard the footsteps outside while in the living room. However, when I moved over to the kitchen, that's when I could hear it, as I was no longer next to the noise the laptop had made. I now remember grabbing an ice pick and staying as quiet as possible. I mean, there had to be a reason the window opened, right? Maybe the wind? But that would be impossible. These windows slide open left or right. They don't open in and out. Regardless, I wait for about 20 minutes hiding behind the couch before I get the courage to check the source of the noise. I head over to the room I think I hear it in, and I'm hit with a blast of cold air. The window was wide open, and you could see what looked to be melted ice on the ground. I was scared. I thought maybe someone might be hiding underneath the bed, or maybe waiting in the closet. I check both, but nothing. Finally, I check outside and I shine my phone's flashlight. All I'm able to see are footprints in the snow as they run off into the woods. And that was pretty much it. I know it's not really scary, but to this day, I don't know who or what had gone inside the cabin. My parents and siblings tell me they were nowhere near me, and the nearest neighbors that were two miles away claim it wasn't them either. So, who knows? Before we get to the last story, I just want to say thank you once again for making it this far in the video. Remember, if you'd like to see more, including previews and exclusive content, then make sure to be following me over on my Instagram, at the Creepy Fox Official. Thanks. On to the last story. Our final story. They were watching my home from the forest. This one literally happened a few weeks ago. Very quickly, I live next to a forest. A lot of times, we will have animals walk in our huge backyard, but normally, they consisted of things such as elk, foxes, and raccoons. Nothing too crazy. So, it's one in the morning, and I'm home alone. Since I'm such a night owl, I had been up playing with my friends on Xbox and eating some pizza. Eventually, I'm finished with my late night meal, and I get up to throw the trash away. I head outside into the backyard, and I throw the garbage away in the garbage bins. Once done, for some reason... I decided to randomly shine my flashlight into the dark trees, and that's when I see them. Two people in hoodies that are seemingly just standing still and staring. 
At first, I thought I was seeing things, so I shined the light again. This time, I see both figures run off deeper into the woods. That's when I got the chills. You see, I live in a very rural area, with the nearest neighbors being half a mile away. They are also elderly, so I highly doubt they would be out this late, just staring at my house. Obviously spooked, I call the police and have them search the immediate area, as well as the woods. They came up empty-handed. So with that, fast forward to yesterday. My parents and I have been out eating dinner as per usual. We return, and we start pulling up into the driveway. Well, our headlights reveal two men in hoodies that they're jumping outside the window and running off into the forest. It was really weird, so my dad has us wait in the car while he heads inside to check things out. Turns out, these two had broken in, and a bunch of our things were stolen. Now, whether or not it's the two I saw that night, I can't be sure. But we are working with officers to try and get this mystery solved. That, and we are trying to relieve the stress that we've had of them returning. In the meantime, we're going to have someone come over and set up a security system. I'll update you all when we know more, but for now, we're just thankful none of us were in the house when they broke in. Also, I refuse to go inside that forest until I know they're found.